assalam alaikum everyone so this is the third and the final lecture on this particular chapter that is the second chapter of your economics book money in the previous lectures we have seen the evolution of money types of money how money have uh, uh, evolved or came into existence because of the difficulties that was faced in barter system and so on so in today's lecture we'll study all about the functions of money the functions of money have been divided into different categories and each category will be studied in detail so the first type is primary function second is secondary function and the last type is contingent functions of money primary functions of money primary functions means the very basic function or the very basic work that money does so the primary function of money have been mm, given the two forms the first one is medium of exchange the most important function of money is to serve as a medium of exchange any commodity can be purchased or sold with the help of money so what is the function of money the function of money is to facilitate trade and commerce that is exchange of goods and services another primary function of money is measure of value or unit of account money provides a measure of value to goods and services or to commodities it also serves as a common unit of account anything any transaction any trade can be measured or given a form with the help of unit of account price is the value of a commodity or a service expressed in terms of money money enables to compare the prices of commodities different currencies are used to express the value of commodity in different countries say for example rupee is used in india or dollars are used in usa income and expenditure of all kinds assets and liabilities and all other trade and commerce related transactions are stated in terms of money as a unit of account now the second category of functions of money is secondary functions secondary functions are those functions which the money performs or money does apart from its basic function of serving as a medium of exchange first secondary function is standard of deferred payments deferred payments means payments that will be made in the future under barter system taking loans was easy but its repayment was difficult because loan was in the form of grains cattle and so on money has overcome this difficulty payments to be made at a future date is called deferred payments by serving as a standard measure of payment over a period of time money makes borrowing and lending function easy with the help of money we can make the future payments so this particular function was introduced in order to overcome the difficulty of the barter system
स्टोर ऑफ वैल्यू मनी एक्ट एज अ स्टोर ऑफ वैल्यू मनी नॉट ओनली सेटिस्फाइज वॉन्ट्स इन द प्रेजेंट बट ऑल्सो मेक्स प्रोविजन फॉर द सेटिस्फैक्शन ऑफ वॉन्ट्स इन द फ्यूचर दिस इज पॉसिबल ड्यू टू सेविंग्स अकॉर्डिंग टू जे एम केन्स मनी इज अ लिंक बिटवीन द प्रेजेंट एंड द फ्यूचर as we have seen in the qualities of money as well that money has got store of value the definition of the money itself states that money stores value when you are holding a 200 rupee note that means you have the value of rupees 200 in your hands and with that you can buy or purchase or uh, acquire goods and services of that particular value so money has store of value and it performs that particular function of storing the value for future preferences transfer of value money enables transfer of value from one person to another and from one place to another real assets like building plot shop agricultural land can be sold at one place and can be purchased at another place with the help of money when you make payment with the help of a currency note you are transferring value from say customer to a particular vendor or the business trader so money helps in transferring the value from one person to another and from one particular commodity or to another as well so it acts as a medium of transfer which forms the basis for any transactions in terms of trade according to professor kingley in the modern period money plays an important role almost in all economic transactions contingent functions of money are those functions that money does indirectly those are not direct functions but indirectly money aids in all these particular matters and therefore those are called as contingent functions measurement of national income national income is expressed in money terms distribution of national income among the four factors of production in terms of is in terms of monetary rewards for example rent wages interest profit all these payments are made in terms of money so money helps in the measurement of national income pieces of credit commercial banks create credit money on the basis of primary deposits money provides a liquid base for creation of credit money all this institution financial institution banks are on the foundation of money if there was no money there would not have been any concept of credit and therefore money is called as the basis of credit any loan you take any future payment you make is all in the form of money so money helps in creating a credit base imparts liquidity to wealth money is called the most liquid asset money can be easily converted into any asset and any asset can be converted into money say for example a per- person can purchase gold and if he wants he can sell it and purchase government bonds or shares so here 
one form of commodity is being converted to money and with that money another form of commodity is being purchased so this is the very a uh, function of money that it imparts liquidity to the wealth any form of wealth you have can be easily converted into cash that is in money form estimation of macroeconomic variables macroeconomic variables like gross national product total savings investment can be easily estimated in monetary terms it also facilitates government tax collection preparation of budget all these important variables which determine the growth and development of the country are calculated and measured in terms of money and therefore money helps in the estimation of macroeconomic variables thereby indirectly helps in calculating or measuring the progress of the country so these are the contingent functions the functions which money performs indirectly we have seen the functions of money and the last topic for uh, this particular chapter is the concept of black money we all are familiar with the concept of black money we'll see what black money is according to economics black money is any money which is received in cash but not accounted for and on which tax is not paid to the government black money is tax evaded income it can be earned through both legal and illegal means black money encourages illegal activities such as corruption bribery black marketing hoarding this creates obstacles in economic development economic political and social instability are created in the economy due to black money to control black money demonetization is one of the tools which many countries have adopted so we have completed our second chapter today and that's all for today's lecture thank you